Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is we're taking the next step now. After we've drawn out our photograph, which we have, I, you can see mine to the left side of the screen, and I've used my grid. Now we're going to prepare to start shading. Before we start shading, one of the things I'm going to want you guys to do is to go out there and basically erase your grid lines. Don't erase the square itself, but you could get rid of those grid lines. I don't want the grid lines to be part of the finished drawing. And it's much easier to get rid of them in the beginning rather than the end. Since I'm uh, sort of heavy-handed and I'm a righty, I like to work from the top to the left to right, like I'm writing on a piece of paper. That way my hand doesn't sit around and smudge too much of the work that I'm doing. If you're a lefty, I would work from the top uh, right-hand side and work my way over to the left. Um, so what I like to do is I like to start in that top corner. Um, again, just like we did with the bottle, my idea is the smoother you put on your actual pencil, the smoother and even it will look when it blends. And in this case, you know, if I look at the top of this portion of the picture, the area I'm working on right now, there is a lot of darkness in here in the, in the corner, and it sort of dissipates out. Now, just like the bottle when I, we did that demo, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew that you can always go back and make things darker. It's a little bit difficult to come back and make things lighter. So what I would say is I would always sort of err on the side of just a little bit too light because, again, I can blend this in and sort of work my way down. Now, just because I'm working on this first square right over here, um, this area right here on my picture, just because I'm working right here, doesn't mean I just have to just focus on this one part. What I'll do is I'll start to sort of just work on this area, and since this area sort of connects down into the rest of the bottle, again, I'm going to sort of continue shading. And this first round is just to get a basic color gray because the area I'm working on, none of it is really particularly uh, light. There's no white in this area. So I'm going to start working with some of that gray. Down over here as I get to this edge, I'll see that it probably needs to be just a little bit darker. I'm going to change my directions a little bit since I'm working on this edge right here. And I'm just going to add a little bit more pencil lead. For the purpose of blending, we again, when we're working on an area that we want it to look smooth, if I shade left to right, what I want to do is I want to kind of blend in the opposite direction or in little circles. If I put it down smooth and I, I blend in little circles or little directions, you're going to find that your pencil lead should start looking smoother and smoother. Um, from here I have like a base to work on and now I can sort of come back and say, well, right up here is a really, really dark area. So in this one part, I'm going to want to sort of press down a little bit harder and add a little bit more. I also have some sort of creases and marks. It's not important that you know exactly how it looks on the face, but what you want to do is pay attention to the picture and realize that I have some marks that go diagonally across here. So when I start shading, I'm going to keep my marks going sort of in that direction so that I can kind of sort of mimic or emulate some of the stuff that's going on in the actual picture. So I'm going to continue to do that over here, and I'm going to just sort of add a little bit more pencil lead again. Always can come back and add a little bit darker. I'm going to kind of start handing at some of those creases that I'm seeing over here, and then I'm going to look at some of these areas just have to go just a little bit darker. Again, you can see, you can always see my pencil marks, but I'm really trying hard to sort of put it down as evenly as I can. And one of the techniques I talked about already back when we did our earlier drawings was not really holding the pencil right at the end and not really holding the pencil too tight. Uh, I, my fingers are not squeezing the pencil right now. That gives me the ability to sort of work the way I'm working without really just making sort of scratchy, zigzaggy lines like this. Again, I'm going to come back in and sort of blend some of that stuff in, work it into the paper a little bit more. All right. And again, try to look for the opportunities where I see things happening in the paper or the picture, like it's a little bit darker in through here, well, I'll start making it a little bit darker through in there. It's really dark right in here. I'm going to come back in, and I'm just going to really now sort of punch up that contrast to make sure that I have the sort of same changes. I'm going to continue working on this. I have a little bit of a lighter section in here. I do want to put down a little bit of light gray. 
But as I go over here, and I'll just let you know in this particular picture, that's part of the eyebrow. What I want to do is just kind of go a little bit darker as I'm working. All right? And again, since nothing on this side of the face is particularly bright light, I do want to put a light layer of gray everywhere. Um, so I'm going to just you know keep on adding over here and try to, again, I'm looking at the picture as I'm drawing, and I'm just trying to pick up the same kind of values. And when I say value, I mean lightness or darkness in the picture. Again, my blending, I'm going to try to blend in an opposite direction or in little circles against the grain of what I just put on the paper. The more I do that, the smoother it will look. If you put it down really, really rough, you're going to find that it, it will always look really, really rough no matter how much blending you do. And now in round two here is where I decide, okay, there's some parts of this that I really need to kind of make a little bit darker. Uh, sort of this arch and this sort of edge that you have on this side. So I'm just going to come in here adding a little bit more value, going in a little bit darker. Since there's sort of like a flow, this is part of the eyebrow going into the temple, I might change my direction a little bit. And again, that's what's called cross-hatching when you go in sort of like the crisscross pattern and the shading. It helps it if you're having some trouble making things get a little darker. I'm going to continue on bringing that down through the dark part of the face down in here. And again, you don't, I, you don't have to really focus on trying to work box to box in a way that's going to make the picture look like it's a mosaic or a tile. Um, we want to kind of work uh, piece by piece, section by section, meaning like, you know, in this case I'm working on the temple, and then I'm working my way through the sort of creases and eyebrows. Again, come back in, blend a little bit. I'm trying to pick up some of the value that I see in the picture. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and start shading in another area. Uh, I've got this little corner, uh, for, you know, if you don't know what it is, it is actually just the corner of the eye. That's one of the darkest parts. I'll kind of come in there and make that dark. I'm going to start working in. This is sort of the ridge. This ridge of the fold of the eyelid is pretty dark. So I'm going to sort of darken that in, work on that a little bit as we're, we're talking. I can kind of fill that in a little bit just to help me out. This is sort of the edge of the eyelid, probably where the eyelashes would go. It's a little bit darker uh, underneath it than it is above on the eyelid. And I can just start putting some of that out. And in some of the areas where you have a little bit more detail, it's not like spreading the pencil lead out all over the place, you might want to kind of blend in the same direction as those marks are to kind of work them into the paper a little bit. When I look at the eye here, I realize that the eye itself isn't exactly white anywhere. It all has a little bit of gray. So you see me adding a little bit of that. And I'm going to go into the corners over here, again, looking for every little bit of value that I could find. The more that I find, the more realistic this ultimately will look. Uh, so, you know, I am, you know, I've been drawing longer than you've been alive. And I started teaching in 2003. So I've been doing projects like this probably before you were born. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to be able to run through this relatively quickly and, um, you know, without having to come back and making a lot of uh, mistakes or redos. I don't expect you guys to be able to do it, bing, bang, boom, and be done with this inside of 15 minutes. It's just not realistic. I'm going to give you guys today, I'm going to give you guys tomorrow, and we're going to work through this uh, next week as well. So, you know, don't think, you know, in a demo like this, okay, Mr. B did it in 10 minutes, I should be able to do it in 10 minutes. No way. In fact, if you get this done inside of 10 minutes, and it doesn't matter how complicated your picture is, I'm going to tell you, you did something wrong, all right? You need to take your time, find all the little things that you can find as far as details and value, and really, you know, get in there and get them in there. The, for this drawing, this will be the first drawing that we do that I don't just, if you've completed it and you've completed it satisfactory, that you'll either get one of two grades. This one I'm going to really look for a certain level of quality. How closely did you match the picture? How closely did you match the picture in its drawing, in the sort of proportions of everything? How closely did you match the picture in the sort of details and shading? And how closely are your values connected 
to the values that were in the photo that was uh, given to you. So I'm going to continue to add a little bit more as I'm going on over here. And at this point, I'm going to start, well, I'm jumping around a little bit from place to place, uh, but I don't want you to feel like you should be locked into one part of this drawing at any one time. Uh, I'm almost done with this. I actually have a couple other examples that I'm going to show you this period, which are going to go by much, much quicker. But I really don't want you moving on to the shading part until one, you feel really comfortable with what we're doing, and two, that I've made sure that I've sort of checked your drawing, checked the accuracy of your grid, checked the accuracy of the pencil drawing, because like I said, we'll spend two, three days on this. I don't want anybody spending multiple days working on a drawing that's incorrect. So please check in your assignments. If I send something back to you to fix, I really want you to fix it. I, I don't I want ultimately at the end of this for each and every one of you to have a finished drawing that is excellent. I want everybody to get max credit on this, but I don't want to just rubber stamp it along. I'd like you guys to actually develop the drawing and painting skills ultimately that we are supposed to be getting in this class. Now, I'm not quite done with this. I won't lie to you. Personally, I would work on this myself for another, I don't know, probably another 15, 20, 30 minutes. Um, I would work on getting a light gray sort of value through the rest of this. I have a lot of touch up and little things to do, but I want to just give you an idea of this is what we're working towards and where we're going. And just like I told you before, is that, you know, if you're going to make mistakes, make them that your picture is a little too light because we can come back and make it darker. Uh, just in my case over here, I think that my, my picture is pretty good right now, but in all honesty, it needs probably another level of darkness throughout the uh, whole thing to sort of try to make this match what you see here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull up a couple of videos and talk over them right now. Um, we're going to go back and just get this out of the way. Okay, so this is another drawing that I did, and I posted this already in our chat, uh, but it's going through the same things, and we're just going to basically review the same stuff that we just went over. Is um, Essentially, I erased my grid lines to start with, and this is a sped up video, so this will only take a couple minutes, but you can see I started with the top left corner, and I'm working my way from the top, left towards the top right and then down to the bottom. I went through and I put down a nice even uh, layer of pencil lead over here just for my you know early light grays. I start light first and I really want to kind of smudge that out. Um, as I work on it you can see I go back to the same spot over and over again to make it a little bit darker. Uh, I don't start working on the really fine details until I feel like I have the correct light and shadow. In this case here, I actually can use my eraser to draw. Your eraser there is to fix mistakes, but your eraser can also be used over there to sort of draw with and lighten things up and create highlights where necessary. So right now when I'm starting to add some of these little marks and some of these wrinkles and like a little uh, sort of beauty marks, I'm adding them because I'm nearly done with that particular part. In some of those bottom sections, you can see the, the square at the bottom left I had nothing drawn in there because everything going on in that particular square had to do with shading and light. Uh, there's a little bit of texture which I don't expect everybody to get. I, I don't expect you to draw pores on the face, but what I do expect is that you get the light and dark values in there. Um, and again, you know, I worked up to that progressively. You can see I keep going back over and darkening some areas, blending it in, darkening some areas. Uh, that is the way that uh, you approach these things. Details like in and around the nose and the face, you know, you can make those good clean edges. The edges that we drew initially and the edges that we um, sort of try to find in the picture, those are things, I don't want you to outline them, I just want you to look at where, like in this particular picture, where we have this really hard edge here, that I also kind of created a really hard edge here as well without creating fake lines. There is no line here, there is no line here. So don't invent what's not in the actual picture. As far as like the darkest parts go, 
things like you know the nostrils and stuff like that that's the easiest thing to do um, and you'll notice that stuff like that I leave till the very end some people like to start there because you know like I know it's dark and I know I could do this part right uh, but I feel like let's get the hard parts done first let's work our way from the top to bottom and that way you're never dragging your hand over top of areas that are already finished what you'll notice for the most part is that I never really put my hand back down on an area that I've finished. Uh, that way I can keep my work really, really neat. When I was your age and you know I was in art class, I actually wasn't that good in art class, um, but when I was there, most of the problems I had is that I'd put my hand on top of a drawing that I'd spend 30, 40 minutes on and I'd basically smudge out all the good stuff that I had on it. Uh, so with that, you know, it, technique that I've sort of come to understand or use over time has really been to avoid dragging my hand over finished work. Um, again, you can see me here using the eraser to sort of bring out the highlights again. And now near the end of the drawing, you'll see I kind of bounce around uh, from the bottom corner to the top all over. Now's the time when I start looking at my drawing and realizing all the little things and places I might have to fix. There's a lot of fine tuning to be done in this drawing. Even once you get to the end, it doesn't mean it's finished. Uh, great artists work on things over and over again. You can see me coming back and finding little dark areas that I feel need to be touched up and darkened up a little bit, still cleaning and blending. So that one's posted. Um, that one is posted to.